Okay, so let's go ahead and get to drawing out this image here. Now I'm gonna be drawing this with curvilinear perspective and I'm going to be doing it freehand. I've never done that inside of a video before, but it's high time that I actually started to do it. So I'm gonna create a layer and I'm gonna call it perspective. And uh, that's that's gonna be helping me draw out some guidelines and such like that. And I'm, I'm already going to lower the opacity down to something like 25%, okay? and I have a red color here and first and foremost this is how I try to visualize curvilinear perspective so far uh, wh whenever I draw curvilinear perspective with Krita or even open tunes what I do is I, I have uh, an ellipse sort of shape and Krita and open tunes the assistant tools they force you into drawing a specific way uh, you know there's a vanishing point right here a vanishing point right here a vanishing point right here here and you know you have the central vanishing point whereas with when you're free handing it what you can do is you can actually picture this as a sphere okay so that you actually have an equator now the northern vanishing point is always at some place on the furthest side of this uh, equator away from you and you know you have a vanishing point right here and, and you can have a vanishing point right here and another vanishing point, something like right here. And you can actually have another equator uh, going on here so that you have your zenith and nadir down here. So this one would be your west vanishing point. This would be your east vanishing point, And this would be your north vanishing point. Okay, so you can freehand this. And that's how I'm going to freehand this image. I actually like freehanding my perspective a lot more than I like using software to do it. So let's go ahead and get into this. I'm going to go ahead and decide that my west vanishing point is right there and I'm going to decide that my north vanishing point is going to be right here and then I'm going to decide that my nadir is right here and my other vanishing points are off the canvas. Okay so if this is my west vanishing point then I'm going to start drawing out a grid using this vanishing point. Now it's really important that you recognize that I have already taught everything that I'm doing in this video inside of the curvilinear perspective playlist and inside of the teach me to draw playlist. The only thing that's different in this video is that I'm actually drawing freehand. That's the only thing that's different. Okay, now I'm gonna change the color of my line work to being a dark blue. And the nadir, if you remember, represents all of the lines that are going up and down. And it goes towards the zenith, which is not inside of the composition. But I know that it's there regardless. Now I'm going to go ahead and use a green color in order to draw out my grid for my northern vanishing point. And typically the rule of thumb is that you want your northern vanishing point to have straight lines. But I don't like that. I like to have curved expressive lines when I freehand my curvilinear perspective. I like to kind of break the rules a little bit because I feel as though it makes a more expressive image. Now one of the things that you want Want to stay away from is getting any of these multicolored lines to look as if they're going somewhat parallel to one another. You don't want that. You want them all to wind up intersecting a lot. That's what you want. Okay, excellent. So now that I've created my grid, I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to call it sketch. And I'm going to pull out my brush and I'm just going to use the black color. And so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and draw out the shape of the room using these guidelines as my guide. Okay, I've gone ahead and created the shape of the room. The next thing I need to do is probably draw out the desk. Now I'm going to erase the lines that I don't need. I kind of want to draw out the staircase that I've established here. So I'm just going to pretend as if everything is transparent right here and draw out my staircase as if the floor and the stairs are transparent. Okay, so that's all that I need in order to imply a staircase. And now I'm going to erase the guidelines that help me determine pretty much two lines that I needed. So the logic that I'm going to use here tells me this. Okay, when you stand next to a desk, it goes up to your hips. So I'm going to draw a line from hip height out to here. So that means that a human being would probably be standing about yay tall, about ish. So I'm going to draw both 
of these lines off towards the distance towards this vanishing point and that's going to help me out a little bit and then I'm going to draw a line that goes straight up straight up and down is the blue lines here okay so that that right there tells me where the railing should go for this staircase you know the handrail and now I'm going to erase the guidelines that I don't need excellent okay so now it's time to draw the table okay so the top of the desk is about the same size as the top of the table so the desk is right against this wall so I'm just going to draw a guideline right about out here again and so that's going to be the top of the table they're going to be collinear sort of planes and so I'm just going to go ahead and use the red lines which go to my east vanishing point and inside of your picture, I got absolutely no idea as to how big this table is. So I'm, I'm not going to make it too awfully big. But what I'm going to do is I, I'm just going to make it rather small. And I'm going to use this corner that's against the back wall. And I'm just going to draw a line that goes parallel to the blue lines and to the bottom corner of this wall here as it intersects into the floor. And so I'm going to follow the red lines out. Out, and then I'm going to follow the blue lines once again down and this is going to help me construct some sort of idea as to how tall this table is and I actually hate that that's I'd like I don't like how this is coming out so I'm going to just kind of backtrack a little bit and I'm going to make the desk shorter and, and since I've I've started drawing this this is the time to go about fixing any problems that might be with the image so I'm going to erase some of this desk now you don't want to be making decisions like this when you're almost finished with the image at all you only want to make decisions like the one I just made when you've just started drawing the image actually I'm going to make sure that the table is a little bit a ways from the desk that seems like it makes a lot more sense to me okay now we made some proportion decisions earlier and I'm just going to double check those okay since it's curvilinear perspective it's forgiving so the proportions of the height of this railing are going to work so let's go ahead and flesh out this table really quick here let me go ahead and uh, just draw out the back portion of this box okay now that we've got that established I'm just going to draw the thickness of the top of this table okay that's too thick so I'm going to draw out the thickness on this front face first and notice how my lines are really rough that's fine it's okay that my lines are really rough because this is just a sketch I'm drawing inside of affinity designer and so anything that's just so super rough I can clean up with vector work later on down the road all right I've reached a kind of a critical point to where I need to start making some measurements I'm going to create a new raster layer and call it measurements and I'm going to use the color green and I'm going to just make some measurement lines and I'm going to split it up into fourths in both directions now I have videos that have already covered everything that I'm doing here now if what I'm doing here is super confusing to you then you need to go back and watch the curve linear perspective playlist and the teach me to draw playlist all right and now I'm going to get rid of lines that I don't really need in order for me to have clarity of what I'm doing here and this will just give me a one-fourth measurement grid of everything on the top surface of this table now I, I need to actually measure this down even more so I'm going to draw an X on two corners of the grid and that will give me the center on one side and I'm just going to draw out those measurements going both directions okay so now I'm going to get rid of some of the stuff that I don't need here now that those last few lines that I drew I'm going to highlight them in red which means I'm just going to redraw them as being red lines excellent so now I'm going to lower the opacity of this measurement layer and I'm going to go back to my sketch layer and I'm just going to draw lines that go at the intersection points here and I'm just going to kind of draw a few things out as if 
the table is transparent so I have kind of an idea as to what's going on here. Because right now what I'm kind of doing is trying to visualize the skirt to the table. If you don't know what a skirt to a table is, then you should probably Google uh, something like table anatomy or something. Okay, excellent. So now I found where the legs to the table are located. And so I'm just going to draw them down. Remember, down are the blue lines towards the nadir. Okay, excellent. So now I can go ahead and get rid of a lot of the stuff that I've gone ahead and drawn out as reference lines and such like that. Okay, so we have our table. So now we're going to go ahead and draw out our window. I've decided that not all of the window is going to be in frame and I draw it out as a partial box, a really elongated one. And I want to have there be a little bit of a windowsill and that's going to be represented as a box. Generally, whenever you're drawing in perspective, that's what you're going to be doing. You're going to be drawing a lot of boxes. And you're going to be refining them quite a bit in order to make them into different objects than just boxes. Now, since the window kind of goes outside of the canvas, what I've decided is I'm just going to go ahead and draw out a really long rectangle uh, that goes across the span of this entire window. And I'm gonna draw an X in the measurements layer in order to find out where center is. And then I'm gonna go back to the sketch layer and draw out some more of these details. And now there's a curtain that kind of goes for the windows. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of draw out the impression of uh, what's going to be holding the curtains. And I'll be refining this later. And then I'm just going to draw out the curtains. And erase any lines that I don't need. And draw out the impression that there's more curtains going on here. Now oftentimes I wind up revisiting parts of the, what I've drawn and I refine it quite a bit, especially if what I drew earlier doesn't appear to match with the perspective lines that I've drawn previously. Now the perspective lines that I'm referring to are the red, green, and blue lines on the screen. And sometimes I also find myself recomposing some of the scene primarily because I think that the composition just needs to be a little bit reworked just a little bit but big changes that deal with proportions at this point in composing the image you don't want to do a whole lot of that but I haven't I haven't had to worry about that yet the next thing that I'm going to go ahead and focus on is the coffee cup so I'm just going to go ahead and draw out a square to represent the bottom of the coffee cup. Now, you may be thinking, well, a coffee cup is round. Well, like I said earlier, when you draw in perspective, you start out with squares and boxes, with everything, and then you refine it. And what I'm about to show you is what you have to do with every single ellipse that you draw, unless it's so small and it has nothing to do with the composition by and large, okay? Actually, that's, uh, that, that square is just a little bit too big, but let's go ahead and find a size for it that I think will work. I'm going to also change the placement of that square. And now I'm going to go back to my measurements layer, and I'm just going to split this into fourths in either direction by drawing out an X, finding center in either direction, draw an X on two of the squares that are opposed to one another, and then drawing out the centers of those squares in either direction. And then erase the X's that we were drawing so that we have a one-fourth grid or one-quarter measurement grid. And now I'm going to change colors to a purple color and I'm just going to draw an X around all of the border areas. Okay, excellent. So what we're looking for are the intersections of the X's that are closest to the edge of the square. And then we're going to use the centers as they intersect into the edge of the square. And that will give us a nice ellipse. So I'm just going to use a blue line on the measurements layer, and I'm just going to go ahead and draw out an ellipse that intersects with every single one 
of those points. Okay, excellent. So that worked out pretty well. So let me go back to the sketch layer, pick out the black color, and go to the edges of this square and follow the blue lines going up in the composition. And I'm finding that's not working. So I'm just going to use the lasso tool and since uh, curve linear perspective is somewhat forgiving, I'm going to select my sketch and my measurements layers. And I'm going to use the lasso tool and select this. I'm going to see if I can preserve the work that I've done so far with this. So just using the sketch layer, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and decide that this ellipse is still valid. I'm, I'm just, I, I don't want to redo the work, but I'm going to make a few slight adjustments to it with the sketch layer. And all that will be visible with this ellipse is going to be the front portion of it because this is a coffee mug. And so that's all that I'm going to be paying attention to uh, when I draw out the ellipse on the sketch layer. And I'm just going to go ahead and draw out the top face of this uh, coffee mug. Excellent, so now I'm gonna go back to my measurements layer and I don't really need any of this anymore. So I'm just going to erase all of that because I already have the line on the sketch work that I need, the ellipse line. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw out a 1 4th grid on this top face. All right, and I'm just going to use a purple color and I'm going to draw an X around the border areas once again. Okay, and once again, what we're looking for is the intersection of these X's that are closest to the edge of this upper portion of the box, which will be the coffee cup. And where the centers intersect with the edge of the top of the box. And I'm just going to use my sketch layer really quick here. And I'm just going to go ahead and draw out that ellipse. Awesome. Okay. So now I'm going to go right here and draw the edge of the coffee cup. And right here and draw the other edge of the coffee cup. And I'm just going to kind of draw out a box here at the top of the coffee mug. And another box down at the bottom of the coffee mug. And I'm just going to draw out a shape that kind of resembles the handle to a coffee cup. Awesome. And now I'm going to erase everything that I don't need. And if this seems like an awful lot of work in order to draw out a coffee mug, then I don't know what to tell you. This is how you draw a coffee mug. No one said that drawing is going to be easy or that it would be fast. In fact, I've said the direct opposite of that. I've said drawing a picture takes time. Now, the top edge of a coffee mug, it's not so sharp, it's not so thin that it will cut your lip, okay? So we need to add thickness to the top edge of this coffee mug. And I'm just gonna adjust this ellipse a little bit. It is curvilinear perspective, so it does allow you to be a little bit creative and to take creative liberties. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw the thickness of the edge of this coffee mug. And I understand it looks hideous, it looks ugly. Uh, but the thing is, is that's fine. It's a sketch. You're allowed to let this thing look ugly for right now. I'm just gonna freehand an ellipse right here that will fit. Technically speaking, I should be doing things a little bit more technical here but sometimes uh, just freehanding something just makes it look a little bit better or it's just a little bit less time consuming I'm, I'm just going to adjust a few things about this coffee cup I just there's things that are really bothering me about it you first start out with following the rules as best as you can with these freehanded perspective lines and if that doesn't work out you turn towards uh, freehanding it. And if it's still not working out, then you go back to the drawing board and do things uh, the technical route, okay? So I'm going to change the position of the handle for this 
coffee mug. Let me just erase some of these guidelines that I drew with the measurements layer so that you can just take a look at the coffee mug itself. See how nice that looks? I mean, it, it does look pretty nice in my opinion. And I already know that we're going to have our little figure standing here staring at us. And I'm not going to draw him until the background is done. He's the reward for drawing everything else right, okay? That's how I see it, okay? And uh, I want there to be an iPad here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and draw one out and uh, I'm gonna find center because the home button would be aligned with center on this device. I don't know if the home button is still on iPads, but that's the thing, you know, uh, most people when they think of an iPad, it has a home button. Okay, and I'm gonna round off the edges here of this iPad. And you had a uh, ink container right here. And I'm just going to go ahead and draw out a square right here for the ink container. I'm gonna zoom in and use the measurements layer. And once again, just like how I've done with every single one of my ellipses, I'm going to go ahead and make a one fourth measurement grid. And then I'm gonna go ahead and draw out an X around the border areas. Once again, I'm gonna circle the intersections with the X's that are closest to the edge and where the centers intersect with the edge of the square. We've done this a, a few times already. Hopefully you're seeing a pattern. And I'm just gonna go to my sketch layer and I'm gonna go ahead and draw out the ellipse. I'm gonna pull out my brush, go to the measurement layer. I'm just going to go ahead and measure the half waypoint on all of these inner squares to this in internal grid. And I'm just going to go ahead and use these centers to construct a square. And I'm gonna use the sketch layer to help me draw some lines that go straight up. Okay, now that I have the corners going up, I need to go ahead and create a square up top. And if you just pay attention to what's going on down below, you can actually see what's going on here. So this line right here that has the dot on it needs to go to this line. If you pay attention to what's going on down here, you can know what's going on up here. So we can go ahead and do that. So this thin line needs to merge up with this uh, line right here. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And so now we need to just erase some of these lines that already have been merged to clear things up. Okay, so there's only one place to go now. Okay, so now the ellipse is so small that I feel as though if I were to do all of that work, the pixels are gonna be so minuscule that I won't be able to make heads or tails of it. So this, when it gets to being that big on the composition, that's when you can freehand it. But you have to freehand it inside of the square that you've created using perspective, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Now usually, there's some sort of weird lip to a jar and, and so that's what I'm going to start simulating. A lip to a jar. So I'm going to draw out another box down below and I'm going to draw another ellipse freehanding it. With it being this small, you can freehand it. And again, you can freehand it but only if it's inside of a square that's been utilized using perspective. If you if you haven't made a square in perspective, then you're wasting your time and it's not going to match. There are a few minor inconsistencies and so I'm going to freehand a few things to make things look just a little bit more interesting. All right, and so now I'm just going to kind of freehand the shape of this container. Now remember what I said about the ink? The ink needs to have an ellipse. Notice how I didn't erase the square on the bottom of this. There's a reason for that. Let's go back to the measurements 
and go ahead and, you know, start drawing out the ellipse that needs to be up here. Now, you cannot, you cannot just grab this and then move it up. You, you absolutely cannot. It will not work. You can try it, but everything that you draw trying to do that will look awful. You can't do this. This will not work. If you try doing this, then what will happen is, uh, you'll see. Like, genuinely and truly, you can go ahead and try it, but it's not going to work in perspective at all. Notice how some of these lines that are going, that are supposed to be parallel with this green line, they're actually all contradicting and, and colliding with it. You can't even just minutely usually move these. Uh, curvilinear perspective is forgiving, but it's not quite that forgiving. Okay, so I'm going to delete all this work on the measurement layer. And I'm going to press Control D. And I'm just going to go a little bit of the ways up. Okay, excellent. So now I'm going to go ahead and make a one-fourth grid once again. Find those oh-so-special intersections closest to the edge and where the centers intersect with the edge. And then I'm just going to go ahead and draw out a purple ellipse. Now, this is going to be bigger than the thing that I freehanded, but I think I'm liking this shape better than what I drew out earlier freehand. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to my sketch layer and I'm going to erase what I freehanded earlier because it looks hideous. And I'm just going to draw some perspective lines going up to this ellipse that I drew out. And I'm just going to go ahead and draw out that ellipse. Doesn't matter if it's a little bit ugly, uh, it, it really doesn't. And then at the bottom of this top portion thingamajig, I'm just going to go ahead and just draw out some shapes like that. And I'll get it worked out when I start working on vectors. Um, but I like this shape a lot. Uh, and I'm just going to clean things up just a little bit. Um, I'm going to, I'm gonna freehand an ellipse that basically winds up being kind of parallel with what I drew earlier here to symbolize the thickness of the container. All right, and I'm gonna finish drawing this ellipse from the sketch layer, I'm mean, from the measurement layer. Excellent, and I'm just gonna go to my measurements layer and erase all of this because I don't need it anymore. And now that I have that accomplished, I can go back to my sketch layer and I'm just going to kind of mimic the ellipse that is just above it. And then I'm going to draw the body of of ink copying the bottom ellipse. And then I'm just going to erase things that I don't need anymore, such as the box that I drew out initially. And you know, just for kicks and giggles, I'm just going to freehand an ellipse down here uh, for the bottom of the, the neck of this container. And I'm just going to draw out that pen, but you kind of have to think, how much of this pen are you actually going to be able to see if the tip of it is inside of ink? Not much, in all likelihood. So later on down the road, I'll be addressing this. Okay, so we've made some great progress so far. I mean, this is looking pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out the brush and I'm just going to continue this wallpaper that's at the upper portion of the wall all the way through here. Excellent. And even though this wasn't in your original picture, I like the idea that there's a lot of windows inside of this room. And so I'm just going to go ahead and just do something like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and get rid of some of this wallpaper stuff that I went ahead and drew. You never know when you're going to need to use a line. So I go ahead and draw it. I'm just going to create a square that's actually inside of the canvas. And I'm going to split it in half with the measurements layer. And then I'm going to split it in half once again on either side 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and draw an X right at this bottom square that I've created with the measurements and draw this line that's in the center here out and I'm going to draw out an extension. Now I've already covered what an extension is inside of the Teach Me to Draw series. All right, excellent. So now I'm going to go back to my sketch layer and I'm going to draw a vertical line going up in all of these places that I've gone ahead and split this in two. Okay, excellent. Now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and draw out uh, a little bit of a border around these. And once again, I mean, I have this desk and this desk tells me how tall everything is. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a series of guidelines to help me figure out just where the bottom of this desk is. Awesome. And now I'm just going to draw the bottom corner of this desk out towards the wall and then I'm going to draw the top portion of the desk out towards the wall as well. Then I'm going to draw, use the blue lines to tell me where up is and that is about hip height out that direction. And so I'm going to use these red lines to tell me how everything is as I bring this line all the way out here. That looks really good. And I'm just going to now use the green lines to wrap this around here. Awesome. Okay, so this tells me, let me go back to my sketch layer. That tells me that the handles to open up these doors are going to be right there. Okay, I think that looks pretty cool. And now I'm just going to create a new layer. And right now I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to play around with color. And I don't really care about just how perfect my colors are at this point. I just want the idea of everything. I'm just trying to visualize things just a little bit. And everything that I've been working on in this video has been rasters so far. And the rest of this video is just going to be a really fast time lapse uh, with very little step-by-step -step narration explaining the logic of what I'm doing. I just make a ceiling fan and, uh, you know, I also draw out the backpack. Now, drawing out a backpack, the only thing that you really need to know is it's pretty much a big square. And then, since it's made out of cloth, you don't really need to worry too much. Uh, you can you just follow perspective loosely and draw your lines all wiggly and there you go. You have it made out of cloth. <laughs> and that's your, that's your backpack. You see me starting out doing the uh, vector work right now and you know you can be actually pretty sloppy with uh, laying down your lines and then you know you pull out your selection tool and uh, you go ahead and move your lines into shape make sure that they're nice and perfect you can even see things inside of the picture that you have probably not really liked too much and even if it kind of even if the improvement violates the rules a little bit with perspective you can go ahead and do so because everything that you've been drawing has been freehand throughout the entire process and so if if you violating the rules uh, is due to you freehanding it and you correct it in a way that looks better uh, probably the the things that were you know making it look bad were the rules to begin with because it was all freehanded every single line you know um, under the hood and you know everything else uh, that you d you're doing that everyone will actually wind up seeing uh, here you see me uh, doing the uh, line work uh, or the inking process with a coffee cup and I think I got that nailed down to a T. I think that the best looking thing that I uh, drew in this image, uh, bar none, is actually the ink container. It also happened to be the most difficult thing to work on throughout the entire process of, you know, inking as well as, uh, well, actually, you, you were there while drawing it. That was pretty difficult because you're basically constructing a cylinder with a cylinder inside of it and then having to construct how this little you know uh, pouring mechanism uh, you have to construct how that looks as well and when you're coloring it then you have to worry about how the gradients all affect the the pen uh, one of the frustrating things is that when you start getting a whole bunch of gradients working all in one is zone one area you can have uh, just little minute things that are just higher opacity than others uh, and it, it really obnoxiously so actually I had just this tiny line of little tiny pixels like one pixel big and you know you're able to do this split screen with affinity designer and you can actually see it on the screen right now it's to the left of the layers panel it's uh, just basically just this uh, thing on the viewer which allows you to be able to see the outlines of stuff you can change that to being a uh, pixel view and uh, yeah I 
I, I, I changed it over to being a pixel view and then I, I saw that I could still see it in pixels. So if I if I were able to see some weird glitch or some weird thing uh, in vector view mode, but I couldn't see it inside of raster view mode, then I really wouldn't give a crap about how it looks inside of the vector mode because ultimately I'm going to export my work as rasters. But I did see it inside of the raster view mode, so I had to keep messing with all of those little gradients in order to get rid of that one pixel line thickness bit of obnoxiousness that uh, kept sticking out and uh, yeah you know I think that the main thing that I, I need to nail down are reflections I think that I got the reflections pretty spot on with the uh, coffee cup and the ink container but I think that with the desk the floor the uh, table I feel as though I I, I could have done a little bit better uh, also, the uh, there's a part in the video where I start dealing with shadows. This is not, like I I know the basics of the basics, but it's something that I need to uh, research just a little bit further in order to uh, you know delve into and such like that on how to you know create your shadows inside of your uh, image. But I felt as though this was you know close enough and convincing enough that uh, I could get away with uh, the shadows shadows being the way that I wound up drawing them. And yeah, you hear you kind of see me doing a lot of weird stuff with uh, ellipses and stuff and it, me influencing the colors very subtly in order to, to get the lighting just right. And uh, all of these shadows are all done kind of just eyeballing. But later on down the road, I wound up uh, creating a new pixel uh, layer and uh, drew a whole bunch of lines from variously different light sources and kind of lined things out. Uh, the thing is, is the uh, the table, uh, it's next to two light sources that will influence it the most. And so whenever you have two light sources hitting one object, you wind up with two uh, different shadows. And one's going to be lighter than the other. Uh, it's kind of like standing inside of a gymnasium. If you've ever done, if you've ever noticed, if you look down, you're going to have like four or five different uh, shadows because you have four or five different lights right above you. And uh, so I tried to incorporate that sort of thinking with that table and uh, I feel as though I, I had a moderate success not not a true success but a moderate success uh, here you know I I, I, I kind I'm kind of disappointed because like I, I would have wanted to be able to cue you guys in on the process of drawing out the character but this video is getting to be uh, one hour and 14 seconds long uh, I mean I'm standing here right in front of the editing software right now uh, just kind of watching the video play while I'm basically watching what my voice over will be during different parts of the footage and uh, you know this video is already obnoxiously long and I have no idea if anyone's gonna watch this video all the way through and if you have if you've been watching all the way up until this point 53 minutes and 8 seconds you are a freaking champion thank you for watching leave a comment I wish I I wish I had some sort of uh, uh, reward for you but anyways guys if you uh, if you have any artwork that you would like me to take a look at and critique and the thing is is as as like I, I'm I am kind of concerned that that Artsy's gonna feel as though I've uh, I've really torn into her work. I am concerned about that, and that's not the intent. Uh, but the the thing is, is in the end, she's going to get a free picture drawn by me, uh, me redrawing the picture, which is you know what I referred to in my last video, constructive constructivism, me redrawing it and explaining how I'm drawing it and what I'm thinking when I'm drawing it. I mean, that's that's gold right there. That's giving you justice where you you know if. If you felt offended by the first quarter of the video, the whole rest of the video is a big apology and you wind up with this amazing image in the end, or at least, I don't know, maybe I'm bragging too much, I'm sorry. Um, if you think it's amazing, I guess it's amazing. But there you have it. Um, but yeah, uh, you're going to see me working on the shadows and highlights on uh, the the little moth character pretty soon here. Uh, you know, Artsy, Artsy, the artist that drew the original picture. I, I think that one way that you can start no longer drawing characters that are just standing there staring at the the camera um you you, you tend you tend to overcomplicate things a lot and so you know you, you've got this character you, you've shown me different references that you've got where you're thinking of some sort of animal torso and 
uh, an owl's head, uh, moth wings, and goat legs and stuff, and you have all these weird references. Just, uh, to be honest, with what, with what you're actually outputting and drawing versus your references, just look this up, okay? Go onto Google Images and just type in Rescuers Down Under, okay? Those creatures have a similar enough anatomy to what you're drawing that that's all you really need. Yes, you can go ahead and add hooves to them, but uh, there's not much of a difference from a goat's legs to a horse's legs to a mouse's legs to... You get the point. Uh, to a dog's legs and all that. They're pretty much the same. The structure and stuff. The primary difference is how their, their actual feet are structured. The, you, if you actually take a look at the bones and such, they're pretty stinking similar. They're pretty much the same. So, yeah, just use that as a reference. That will help you out quite a bit. And uh, the thing that I think that you're struggling with the most is uh, the foreshortening with the goat legs. And so you just wind up drawing the same legs that you've wound up drawing all throughout the entire time that you've been drawing. Um, but yeah, the, the primary reason why I've critiqued just about every single thing that, w that, that was inside of uh, the original image is because um, of several things. Artsy has, has made it clear that she wants to become a professional artist, and so she has a big learning curve. She has a really big learning curve in a short period of time that she needs to do in order to get to that goal. And just saying, hey, I just keep at it, you know, you're doing a great job. Yeah, you know what? Do keep at it. You're doing a great job. It's just that's not the advice that I feel that she needs at this point in time in order to improve. She needs to actually be shown everything that needs to improve and how it needs to be improved. And that's exactly what I feel like I've done inside of this video. So if you guys, if you guys in general, uh, other people that are watching, if you would like to have something similar done for your artwork where I critique a piece of your artwork and uh, I, I go ahead and redraw it, whether in part or in full, uh, we can go ahead and do that. Um, it, it all depends on, on what I have lined out, but uh, I am willing to do that. I guess I, I don't know, maybe this might be the, the next uh, form of what the subscriber drawing request series might be. In, because like currently, uh, the, the subscriber drawing request series uh, whenever I've asked, hey, what do you guys want me to draw? You, it just seems like some random stuff, and usually it's just like three or four people voting. So the subscriber drawing request series has pretty much died uh, in the past year. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, so maybe maybe it might evolve into something else. Here you actually saw me drawing lines, uh, curvilinear lines from the light sources. and So I'm kind of adjusting all of my shadows that I've already drawn. That I just kind of, I, I just placed in shadows willy-nilly, whatever. And uh, here, you, you know, I'm, I'm using the red lines as a reference for the, um, f for the table. Uh, kind of eyeballing what would the lines be doing in, in different positions uh, in order to form the shadow. And uh, I did the same thing with the other light bulb. It's just it happened so quickly that uh, it probably didn't even register. Uh, here, you know, it's supposed to be a wood floor. And so, you know, I, I tried a few things in order to imply that it's a, a wooden floor. And so I, I tried something different. I, I added a highlight across the floor and uh, made this staggering effect to the to the highlight uh, to further imply that it is a uh, you know a, a wood floor. Also, um, artsy. Uh, you don't need like whenever you're drawing a hairy or feathery character, you don't need to draw every single hair, and you don't need to try and draw every single feather. Um, if, if you actually look at what I've, I've drawn, and you will get the full resolution image that I drew in this video here, okay? Um, if you actually look at how many lines that are on my character, I didn't wind up drawing every single little, uh, little hair on your character. Um, I, I took a few creative liberties with the moth character. I, uh, I, I gave the wings eyes and I went ahead and opened up the wings because I've never seen her character with the wings opened up. I've wanted to for a series of weeks now, but uh, 
I, I just, I've, I've, all that I've seen is just a character staring at the camera, and so since I'm the one drawing it, I can go ahead and change it up just a bit and still be loyal to the original source material. And here you see the final image. <laughs> and it just looks so good. And as the camera zooms out, you get to see all the benefits of, uh, of curvilinear perspective. It actually looks like you're turning your head. It's so cool. It's so cool. I, I love this picture and it was a fun, it was a fun project. So yeah, uh, hope you guys, uh, enjoyed the video. Anyways guys, that pretty much concludes it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And if you guys would like to get more notifications from me, feel free to click on the bell or go ahead and follow me on Twitter. A link is supplied in the video description below. And if you guys would like to see more of my content, feel free to click on anything that's appearing on the screen right now. Thank you very much for your time.